And welcome back to Jeff Quinangate live here at Citizen Television on the bench today. Principal Secretary for Housing and Urban Development, Charles Hinga, on the heels of the Affordable Housing Law Act, which became law as of yesterday, assented by the president. And we're asking the questions. Where do we go from here? What's the way forward? And what appears to as asking you before the break, how much are you collecting from uh, the housing levy? Or how, you, how much Currently, are you collecting? Yes. Yeah, oh, well, before the, uh, the, court, uh, the court stopped it, mm -hmm. we had picked at 5 billion a month. Uh, 5B. 5B a month. Um, and uh, there was um, the government contribution, which is uh, about 1B. So we are at about 6 to 6.5 billion, which is where we anticipated we were going to be. And going forward? Going forward, um, we anticipate we are probably going to be collecting anywhere between 9 and 10 billion. A month? Yes. That's more than 100 billion a year? Correct. Whew. Okay, in terms of accountability, what mechanisms are in place to ensure that uh, the housing levy is above board? So there are a couple of safeguards uh, that have uh, been put in place. Uh, number one, uh, in, in the act itself, it, imp it imposes serious um, penalties on anyone who's going to misappropriate the money. So it is, uh, it is 20 million fine or uh, 10 years uh, in jail or both. Hmm. Okay, so, you know, in the past, the, the issue was that the, the penalty uh, was not punitive enough to deter. Uh, that is uh, number one. Number two, uh, obviously, there is a, a, a board that is going to be uh, superintending over these uh, funds. And uh, it has a very wide uh, representation. First of workers uh, representation, Kotu sits in the board. The employer's representation, which is the FKE, sits in the board. Mm -hmm. The county's representation, which is the count, uh, COG, sits on the board. And then we have got three independent uh, directors. And then you have uh, a chairman who's also, a chairperson who's also independent. And uh, on that note, I'd like to congratulate uh, Dr. Lyndon Katha, who was actually appointed by His Excellency the President today to be the, uh, the board chair mm -hmm. of the fund. And the other board members that you mentioned, they've all been appointed? So they're being, they're they're, being, they're being appointed. But it's at the discretion of the president and the cabinet secretary? No, mm. no. So like Kotu is independent. Okay. So they're going to send us their names. We're going to have FKE is independent, COG is independent. And then the other three independent are all going to be competitively um, recruited. So, and then the, the act has also staggered um, the appointment of the board members uh, to make sure then that not all of them are retiring at the same time. So we have uh, put uh, some uh, safeguards to ensure that there is continuity. Tell me something, uh, when, it goes, when it comes to counties, yes. will counties have to appoint committees under the same banner? Yes. So and how will that work with the national government? So uh, we, we're very comfortable with that. And we think it, is, uh, it was a good introduction because it was uh, Senate um, that introduced that amendment. Um, and essentially, uh, because uh, on matters to do with county land, um, the counties are required to set up what is called uh, counting housing committees, uh, which um, the act has prescribed who, uh, who is going to sit in, in, in those, including professionals. So architects in the counties, um, engineers, business people are going to be appointed into that uh, committee. And uh, they will be advising counties on uh, their housing plan, um, and also on matters to do with land and also carry out public participation, uh, which, is, uh, which is a core uh, part of this um, uh, program. Okay, and then uh, how does that work with national government? Will there be a clash, is there a conflict of Absolutely interest? Absolutely not, mm. absolutely not. Uh, because, um, so first of all, the levy um, is, uh, um, is a national government function because it is uh, raising of resources. Correct. Um, and then uh, there is an ad the, the board which administers those resources. So counties are one of the implementing agents, so there is no absolutely no conflict whatsoever with the counties. Okay, yeah. moving forward. Mm. Again, if someone is just joining us right now and they just heard about this uh, housing law uh, which yeah the, it's law now it's law now um people paying mortgages there's a lot of questions i'm getting a lot of people yep. texting me saying i'm paying a mortgage mm -hmm. i'm gonna get deducted 1.5 this month yes what do i do about that 20 percent mortgage that i'm paying okay so jeff uh, so first of all let's have context because i think context is important i don't want to belittle 
um, the fact that um, there, there are people who will, will, will have an added burden. But Jeff, what percentage are we talking about? We're talking about 0.6%. Mm. Uh, only 0.6% of Kenyans have a mortgage. 0.06%, not Less 6%. Less than 1%. Less, 0.06, not even 0.6, have a, a mortgage. What about the other Kenyans? What about the 70% of the urban poor? Uh, and yet, Jeff, allow me to read for you um, uh, some, just some extracts from uh, the, the Constitution, if you, if you do allow me, because yes. I think it is important to, mm. to, to have the right conversation. If you go to the Bill of Rights, which is uh, Section 4 of our Constitution, yeah. and you just uh, read the preamble, um, and I want to read that very, very, very quickly. You know, the Bill, the Bill, the Bill of Rights is actually an unqualifiable rights that Kenyans bequeath to themselves. Yeah. And if when you, f you go through Article 20 of the Constitution, the framers of our Constitution were very clear that even the courts have got limited jurisdiction when it came even to matters of bills of rights, okay? Even when you talk about judicial independence, when you read Section 20, Article 20 of our Constitution, they anticipated a situation whereby the judges may make a certain interpretation and they actually directed the judges how to interpret the Bill of Rights. Okay? Yeah. So, um, unless we go back and unless we, does, we, uh, like, um, we put all these articles and say, all, all these things and say we have a right to housing, we have a right to education, we have a right to health and, 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 and good environment, water and sanitation, it is an unqualifiable right. Unless Kenyans can go and vacate. And the same constitution then imposes an obligation on the state to ensure the widest enjoyment of that right. So Jeff, I think we're having the wrong conversation because 10 years or 13 years since this constitution came into play, we should be looking at the journey and ask ourselves, have more Kenyans enjoyed the fundamental freedoms? The Bill of Rights is about social justice, Jeff. Mm. It's about social justice. It is about that all of us have got the same rights. So, uh, Jeff, when you read uh, Article 20, it, uh, um, the, the Bill of Rights, we start with 19, it says, uh, the Bill of Rights is an integral part of the Kenyan democratic state. Two, the purpose of recognizing and protecting human rights and fundamental freedom is to preserve the dignity I mean, how are we having a debate? Uh, I don't know whether you watched yesterday during the conversation because I think uh, yesterday was great because we actually put a human face to this particular program. When Samuel from Ki Ki Kibra talks about he's 10 year old, knows more about sex at that age, all right? Yeah. I have a 16 year old. I have a 15 year old girl. Is my girl better than that girl in the slum? We are talking about rights that Kenyans bequeath to them. So, so what we should be asking ourselves is the other way, is the question should be the other way around. Because Article 25 says that the state, the onus is on the state to prove to Kenyans that it has allocated more resources towards Article 43 rights, which Article 43 rights are the, the, the social justice rights. And then it says, it actually tells the courts that if a matter comes to you, when it, that is 25, 25C, Right. If a matter comes to you that you have got to interpret, it tells them that you cannot stop the state. That's what the constitution says. You can't stop the state from allocating resources towards the enjoyment of fundamental rights. And that's why you're going ahead with this, because despite it is, people going to court. It, oh, absolutely. Because first of all, it is a right that Kenyan bequeathed to themselves, Jeff. All right? Mm. Secondly, over the period of time, we have become more unequal while the constitution was supposed to create a more equal society. Number three, as I mentioned earlier on, is we must appreciate uh, that as a country that they do nothing, which is perhaps what majority of people say, now I have a home, um, please don't disturb me. Mm. The do nothing is dangerous. And why is it dangerous, Jeff? 
The most, I dare say, the most marginalized person in Kenya is the urban poor. Mm. Jeff, it is the urban poor. Mm. I don't know whether you've had a chance to go to the informal settlements. I do. And I do. actually appreciate uh, the kind of indignity and squalor our people are living in. And these are not lazy people. Right. And these are not people who left rural areas because they wanted to come and see the skyscrapers in Nairobi. These are people who came to look for an opportunity. Now, the challenge that we have in Kenya, and that's why I said, Jeff, we can, let's, let's first of all agree we have a challenge. Let's disagree on the solving the, the problem. The, Urbanization generally in the world is associated with high quality of life. Yeah. You and I, Jeff, had a chance of living in South Africa. Correct. And uh, we met in the streets of Joburg. Yes. And, um, you know, the, and, and you saw some of the you know, beautiful cities in South Africa. Jeff, the urbanization is supposed to give you a high quality of life. But the inverse is happening in Kenya. When people migrate from rural areas and they come to, what do they find, Jeff? As I said, they find a place where you pay to use a toilet. Yeah. You and I have the luxury of having, choosing three, four toilets in your home. This family, working class, okay? Yeah. Some of them, your employees here, they pay to use a toilet. How much is their dignity in that? So are we really having the, or are we saying it is not my problem? Mm. Okay? Jeff, I talked about the growth of slums in this country. Again, they do nothing. In five, ten years' time, there will be a slum right outside your gate. And then you're going to sit back and say, where was government when these slums were coming up? So I think it's, and, and of course, the question about taxation is a fair question, Jeff. But I think the right conversation is what you asked me at the beginning of this uh, session, is about governance. Mm. You know, when you go to the more progressive um, uh, countries, their tax to GDP is way higher than Kenya. Yeah. You know, you go to France, it's in the north of 40s. But the French citizen are guaranteed that their social security is sorted out. That if they get sick, they're not going to get bankrupted. That they will get good quality education. And I think that is what we should be, the conversation we should be having. Whether you're paying more taxes or less taxes, Jeff, the question is, are we using our taxes prudently? Okay? Yeah. And I think, and the trust deficit is what convolutes this conversation. Correct. You are deducting me this money. I may not get a chance to live in that house. Somebody else will. Are you going to build that unit at double what the market should be because you want to embezzle the money? Those are the right kind of conversation that you should be having. Real quick, before we go to the magic wall, someone just texted me and asked me, he's retiring in six months. Yes. Will he be paying the housing for the next six yes, months? Yes, the housing levy is a tax, Jeff. Okay? You see, the difference between a levy and a tax uh, is that a levy is for a specific purpose, but it does not necessarily bequeath you a direct benefit. Okay? A tax, a general tax, has, you, you know, you pay your payroll, you pay your VAT, it builds a road in Lodwa, yeah. you probably will never go to Marsabit, okay? That's what a general tax is. So it does not bequeath you any direct uh, benefit. So the levy is for everybody. And that is why the courts, they did not say it is unconstitutional. They said the fact that you are leaving others is unconstitutional, mm, yeah. Understood. Let's go to the magic wall because the reactions are thick and very, very fast. Lots of them. Uh, let's go to the first one real quick. Where are we? Here we go. Uh, Okello Molimu says, Jeff, ask PS Charles Hingup, when should we expect a refund of the illegal deductions of housing levy uh, made in our pay slips for the last few months? Secondly, out of the affordable housing units built under Uhuruto regime, what percentage have been occupied? Okay. First of all, um, uh, Jeff, the case uh, on the housing levy under the Finance Act is still ongoing. So the Court of Appeal. Mm -hmm. Okay. So yeah. um, it has until it is fully and finally determined, um, there is no refund. Okay. Number two, in the Jubilee government, yeah. um, we had a plan to do five hundred thousand homes. Correct. If you recall correctly we actually passed the same law, 1.5% employer, 1.5% employee, 
people went to court, but it was never determined. So that's why I said there were 11 people, some were in the employment court, some were in labor court, mm -hmm. some were in the land, and you know, they were all over the place. And uh, in 2019, uh, uh, my former boss then, His Excellency, the President Uhuru Kenyatta, then uh, saw the frustration in court and then said, make this thing voluntary. Okay? In 2019. Jeff, our target was to do 500,000 homes from 2018 to 2022. Mm. We only did 2,500 units that were completed. Okay? So... The reason why you need this steady cash flow of money coming in is so that, Jeff, number one, we can be able to build at scale. If you're not building at scale, first of all, on the economics, you're not, there is nothing you're doing about it. Yeah. Um, the, the other matrix, and I know uh, uh, th that matrix was affected by COVID, was we had determined then that we were going to grow our manufacturing. Then it was at 7% double it to 14 yeah. percent manufacturing actually went down okay instead of going to 14 we actually went down uh, from seven percent why because manufacturing was predicated on you doing housing and creating a lot of jobs and shoring up our our our, our industry so, so you need shoot up you can you're saying it's going to shoot up no it's going to shoot up We've got a lot of questions, a lot of comments here. Leonard Masika says, kindly ask BS, who would be the suppliers of construction materials? Was there no other way the KK government could create job opportunities other than a housing program? Has Mr. Hinga asked himself the question of corruption? So who would be the suppliers of construction materials? Local. All local. All local. I mean, uh, uh, unless something is not uh, being produced, available, cannot be available. Was there no other? Okay. okay yeah. Fine. It's Mudomi says, what happens to those whose net salary take home will fall below the minimum one third as a result of the new housing levy? The, um, so there is an, uh, an act um, that deals with. So basically, the employer um, has a responsibility to ensure that their employees. Um, take home does not go below um, uh, thirty percent. So it's or, or the one third. Right. So it's it's either you you gross it up. So for example, we had to gross up. We had to increase teachers' salaries. We had to in increase um, our discipline uh, forces salaries so that you make sure that when you do the deduction, all right, you don't uh, fall foul of another statute. Uh, and that's yeah. we stand across the board. That's standard across the board. Uh, Ditch, Ditch says, to what end will they have to minus the levy from our salary now that it is law? Do they have an end plan or will it carry on forever? This law is extremely disconcerting. Um, so this law uh, is now part of our laws in Kenya. We anticipate that in the for foreseen future, this levy is going to continue. Because Jeff, as we see it, whereas we're talking about a 200,000 deficit every year uh, uh, that we are creating, mm. we already have almost close to 3 million deficit to start with. Can I repeat that? Yes. As we start, we have a 3 million, according to the World Bank, it was two, about 2 million units, about 3 million housing deficit in Kenya. Yeah. And every year, we are creating another 200,000. Correct. So over time, it's going to take a bit of time because, Jeff, the situation we find ourselves in took very long to create. And you cannot correct a systemic issue overnight. So, yes, it will take a bit of time until we correct it. In a bit of time, you mean? I mean, if I do the math, 200,000 times 15 years, yeah. that will be three, 3 million units. That's the, that's, and, that, and now you're only addressing the deficit, the current deficit. Right. So this uh, program is going to be part of our, uh, of, of our system. And Jeff, let me tell you, again, countries that have fixed the issue of housing, because we have done an extensive amount of benchmarking. When you go, and I know Kenyans, some, most of the guys that I engage, they hate me using Singapore, mm. all right? Mm. But since 1960 to date, they are still 37% of your payroll in Singapore goes towards paying for education, for your healthcare, and for housing, and your retirement. 37. 
and then there is another tax. But the right question is, if you are deducting 37%, then guarantee me that when I want a house, I'll get. When I want education, I will have. And I'm not going to retire. Jeff, our working people, look at our Kenya Railways pension. Uh, pensioners uh, who live in Makongeni, for example. These are hardworking Kenyans. Most of them, on average, they're 72 years old. They are dying in poverty. What dignity is there, Jeff, in having worked all your useful life and then you come die in poverty? You think housing will solve that? Absolutely, because what is one of the most, the two very expensive uh, costs uh, when you retire that you're going to have. One of them because also your health is deteriorating, your health, your health cost is going to go up, yeah. and that is why health is, a, is front and center of our program. Number two is rent. But Jeff, if you started paying slowly for a unit today, if your working life is about 40, 50 years, you will have finished paying for that unit, probably even gotten a second unit. You, when you retire, you have your own home, so you know there's no rent you're paying, and you probably have another unit that is netting you rental and if, income. And if I'm dead by then? You, your, your, the people who inherit you, your kids, they will take over. Michael Washaga says, what happens to tenants who have lived in county-owned houses for years that are to be demolished to pave way for affordable housing? They will be given the first right to come back and live in a decent home. Those, those units, Jeff, were built in 1940. Most of them are condemned. I don't know whether you've gone to um, all, all these old estates, mm. all right? Mm. Built in the 1940s. Asbestos roof. Yeah. They are to in total uh, decay. If you look at our entire Eastlands, because we've already done a master plan for Eastlands, we have a plan to do what is called Eastlands regeneration, um, where the original Eastlands, which sits on about 1,200 hectares, we had 17,000 houses. Over time, people build what we call the back rooms, mm -hmm. and we're sitting at 42,000. And, and all of them are single dwelling, okay, mm -hmm. in, in, in those estates. When we regenerate Eastlands, we want to put between 150,000 to 200,000 homes. Now, Eastlands is well served by infrastructure. It is closer to where people work, all right, Jeff? And look at Park Road, for example. Park Road was seven acres. Mm. It, was, it had 39 units. We redeveloped it from those seven acres. We have 1,370 units. Are they occupied? Yes. They're, they're occupied. occupied? Absolutely. Wow. So this is not Heka uh, Zabunosi. <laughs> <laughs> this thing is real. It's not fiction. We just need to accelerate it yes. so that we can make sure that our people stop living in squalor. James Baragu says, something is not clear. Is this levy about housing or slum upgrade? The government should stop forcing the housing business to our th or through our throats. Why not support the cooperatives, construction companies, and let them build and sell? This is a very good question, Jeff. And uh, there is a history to this. When you uh, look at the the evolution of housing in Kenya. And, uh, and I, I can take you back to the 1920s, but I will spare you that bit. Hmm. But let's come to post-independence. Post-independence, we, the government then, all right, determined, because there were a lot of people moving from rural areas, we need to bring housing. We formed National Housing Corporation. We set up the, Nas uh, the National Housing Act, and uh, we started building homes. We did site and service. Dandora, and so on and so forth. Um, in the 70s, we did Buruburu, um, and uh, coming to the 80s, something happened. In the late 80s, we got into almost a similar situation we find ourselves in now. We got into debt issues, and we invited our friends, the IMF and the World Bank, mm. to come and assist us. What did they tell us? They just like now, there, there is a lot of things that they're telling us you should do and some you should not do. At that point, they said, government has no business in housing. That is around the 18, uh, 1989, what was called the infamous structural, structural adjustment. adjustment yeah. Jeff, since 1989 to date, our own National Housing Corporation, which was building, has built beautiful homes in many locations in this country, never received a single dime from government. Then what happened? 
we left the housing agenda to private hands. All right? Yeah. Now, the private, now there's nothing wrong with private enterprise. The only challenge, Jeff, is that the private enterprise focused on those who can afford and where they can be able to make a better return. So they will build in Kilimani, Kileleshwa, the Modaigas, and so on and so forth. But for your average worker, the only closest thing that you can get to a home is a tenement pipeline, mm. you know, and all those other places, otherwise a slum. So, Jeff, the issue about leave this thing to the private sector, private sector will only focus on the 3% of the country. What about the 97%? Good point. Good point. Maji, Maji Kenya says, listening to P.S. Hinga, the problem is not housing, but one, rural urban migration caused by centralized development planning. Two, inequalities at work create a good business environment. Three, land. Make it affordable. We shall build affordable houses. You agree with that? Rural urban migration. Big cause. Absolutely. It is, it is uh, we, as I said, we are one of the fastest urbanizing countries. Half a million people, Jeff, are moving to the urban areas. Every year? Every year. 800,000 people are joining the job market. What plan do you have? Give me a better plan. We shall implement it. But don't tell me, let's do nothing. You know, yeah. <laughs> it, is, it is untenable to do nothing. Then he's right um, uh, on the issue of land. So what we have done as part of our program, Jeff, is that because we are the custodian of, 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 of public land, yeah. and land is one of the barriers of ownership or even affordable rental, we are subsidizing as government, okay? Mm -hmm. Number two, the other big, in fact, the biggest cost is the cost of construction, okay? As I was coming here, Jeff, I was seated with manufacturers, our local manufacturers, okay? Because I have asked them, I want you, if I was to give you these orders to do these houses, I want a big saving. They've promised that they can give us up to 30% saving if we have a standard. So for example, Jeff, if we make sure that the columns are all the same, mm -hmm. all right, it means that they can be able to make steel, all right, um, that is fit for affordable housing. There is a lot of wastage Okay, when, I, when they go and buy, say, a 12 millimeter rod um, of, of steel, but you actually need eight, what happens to the four? Mm. It is wasted. So there is a lot of re-engineering that we are doing and also encouraging the private sector. So we are not crowding out the private sector, no. But we are saying that we have got to stop only focusing on the 3%. The other 97% are Kenyans, and according to our constitution, they have the same rights as the 3%. Okay. Uh, Ramos King says, kindly ask the housing PS, how come they are saying the commencement of deductions are starting in April and I have pay slips bearing housing deductions from July last year? Uh, I, I, I think uh, I may just uh, quickly explain. You see, there was uh, um, the housing levy that came into operation through the Finance Act. Mm -hmm. And it started in July. So yes, we are deducted and we, are, we have the money. Okay, we deducted and uh, so far we have collected about 32 billion uh, of that money. We've spent about 3 billion, so about nine, uh, 29 billion is in our central bank account mm. as we sit right now. So Jeff, up until, um, then the high court found uh, that we had three issues. The uh, first issue was the discrimination, which we discussed. Mm -hmm. The second issue that the high court had was that uh, the CS, housing had appointed KRA to be a collector right. and it should be the CS National Treasury. So, um, and then also KRA has got its own act and um, they had not been designated as a collector in their own act, so we fixed that, okay? Now, Jeff, the, um, and the, then the High Court was gracious enough to say, we're giving you 45 days to come up with a new law. Someone went to court to stop public participation. So the 45 days expired without having done the law. Right. Then when it went to court of appeal, all right, they lifted the stay order, okay? And now we are going into full hearing, I think in uh, um, you know, the next couple of weeks, all right? And that is when they stopped the deduction. So this, the deductions were stopped, I think, on the 16th of January. 
Uh -huh. But now with this new law, right. okay, that has addressed the court issues, it begins again. It begins again in March. In March. P.S. I'm going to take a quick break, come back and get some closing thoughts from you going forward. You know, I was just thinking of something. Isn't this housing, low housing, affordable housing, isn't it part of the big four agenda just by another name? <laughs> just hold that thought. <laughs> hold that thought. Come on, Jim. <laughs>